get your ear holes ready to be filled. It's time for the Cine Massacre Podcast. Every Tuesday, the guys behind Cine Massacre talk about movies, games, music, their lives, and all the behind the scenes crap that goes into making videos. It's the off the cuff banter from Rental Reviews and James and Mike Monday, mixed with an AVGN panel. And now, the hosts with the most James, Kieran, and Justin. All right, boys, let's rock. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back. Wow, I am here. We are in person yes. once again. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Cinemasker podcast. And, uh, well, guys, it's been a long time. Yeah. It, well, yeah, like I said, we, we've hung out before. We did this, meet once right before this. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done any video mm-hmm. stuff together other than. I mean, nerd, and we usually shoot that over Skype yeah. or something. We haven't shot anything in person in over a year. Like, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, no, we're in a weird phase right now. I mean, for me personally, it, it just feels like catch-up mode because there's, like, so much uh, family that I've been, you know, visiting, and, like, everything has just been, like, this list of, like, catching up with all these things that you haven't done in, uh, like, a year and a half or whatever. Um yeah, I just remember our last convention we went to in Portland. Yeah, uh, there was Florida. No, we we Justin and I we went to Florida also. Um, yeah, if we play Florida. Yeah, and um, I miss rental reviews a lot too because I remember it just got like more and more difficult to film those uh, virtually. Um, yeah, the delay over Skype made it so hard to you know syncing uh, the audio. Yeah, yeah. We eventually just sort of put it on like a you know hiatus or whatever you want to call it or it's kind of ended for now but this is sort of like a spiritual successor i've been looking forward to this a lot um there's so many movies that we haven't had a chance to talk about or things i've seen in the past year and a half that that i've been like wow this would be cool to just uh talk about yeah Um, because james and mike monday went on a hiatus and then ended permanently mm -hmm. and then for now at least yeah yeah and then rental reviews kind of went on a hiatus and then ended permanently it was kind of like this extinction like uh just every show was just disappearing all we could do was stuff that's just pre-taped we couldn't do anything uh, so i cannot wait for this podcast to end suddenly one day (laughs) that's gonna be sweet uh but no like i figured doing a podcast would be cool doing a three camera video podcast with audio and all the services or whatever it just made sense it's kind of like the talking shit from rental reviews mixed with just our like you know like a normal AVGN or cinematical uh, panel that you'd see at like a convention. We talk about some behind the scenes stuff here. Mm-hmm. We're just going to talk about whatever I think. Whatever. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. I want to do this repeating segment in all these episodes. Mm-hmm. It's what you watching, what you playing, what you drinking. How about what you listen to and what you uh, reading? Also, you could do that as well. Right, okay. But I figured we wouldn't read anything. I don't read. Yeah, we don't oh, really okay. read. <laughs> all right, so James, so what are you doing? Okay, well, I mean, I, I, when I when you ask me that, I think about what have I read in the past year and a half or. Oh, you want to cover or, the last year do, and a half? I, I don't is, know because it's like because there's so much time. We are kind of really, running it, up. and I mean, this is the first time we're really all sitting down you know really talking about well i figured this episode yeah. since it's the first episode of this new podcast we'd go longer than a normal episode that's yeah. fine but yeah. you know, normally it'd be an hour hour and a half maybe we go a little longer we have a lot of catching up so yeah, yeah. really well um, i mean I, got, I guess you know since you said you didn't have anything for books i'll just get those out of the way uh, quick off the top of my head um in the past year or so uh you know i read howard scott warshaw's book uh once upon atari yeah uh, if you want to know about all the crazy shit that was going on in atari back in the day oh man you, you gotta read it it's so good um and like it's it's great because it's um it's video game history from a, a therapist's point of view so he's got like a lot of wisdom in the book and uh-huh. a lot of great stories about just you know career choices and like the the different paths that life takes you on and uh and i'm in there too somewhere so i'm not saying it just because i'm in there but cool uh so the other book i know i've read um because i like autobiographies a lot especially uh rock stars and uh rob halford judas priest he's like one of my favorite you know oh my favorite singer by far yeah um, yeah he's pretty good yeah he finally put out a book and it's great i mean he shares all kinds of personal stuff and everything and it was so good then i ended up reading uh kk downing he's the original guitarist 
Uh, and and I, so I read his book too, just to get his side, you know, the story, just because they both kind of talk about a lot of the same things, but it, it just kind of, by reading both their memoirs, I got to know a lot more about uh, one of my favorite bands, Judas Priest. Yeah, because you have a Judas Priest tattoo, Yeah, right? I do. I mean, I have a tattoo of the, their, their, their Trident logo on my arm. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like them that much. Um, and then I read, uh, for the first time, I read 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's so good. It's like the, the book um, makes a lot more sense than the movie. Uh, yeah. the, the movie the movie and the book were, were made... Uh, simultaneous actually like it, so it basically is like creating a work of art but making two mediums out of it so the book complements the the movie and the movie complements the book um but did, did you just, ever see the uh, the sequel movie the 2010 no but i want to read the book to the sequels right, and watch the, yeah. the movies too yeah because because definitely uh, reading that that book helped me understand the movie a lot more than i ever in did in the sequel i heard really wraps things up in a way that mm. makes it easier to understand as well it's just not kubrick so you know oh cool yeah, so, yeah. I, re I read battlefield earth again this year just because i like it I'm sorry. <laughs> is there a book? There's a book of Battlefield. Oh Earth? yeah, the book. Like the movie, kind of is a disaster compared mm. to uh, the book. And uh, um, unfortunately, it's all deeped in like Scientology and Elron Hubbard being an asshole and stuff. <laughs> but I actually like the book, and I was waiting for a graphic novel to come out of it, where John Travolta was supposed to be drawn in as the Barry Pepper character. Mm. Um, yeah, that was a fun read again. I don't know. Wow. I'm sorry. I just read, read comics. Read really, I mean, I read. Mm -hmm. um, I I I don't know if the second part is out yet. But uh, I was reading the Last Ronin, which is uh, mm -hmm. it's this story in Ninja Turtles, but it's set in the future, and all the turtles are dead except for one, and they were all killed by Shredder's like grandson, and now there's the last turtle is going on this like one way suicide mission to just murder. The, yeah, and, the, you're, and you're and, not sure who and, the last yeah, turtle and is. The thing is, he wears a black mask, but he has all of their weapons. So he has you know the the bow staff the katanas the size and the nunchucks and a grappling hook and he has ninja stars so you don't know who he is until the end of the first issue and i only i i was trying to find that comic for like a while it was it was, it was, it yeah. was actually like the most hype comic for a minute and i couldn't find a physical copy of it i just wanted to know who was the the turtle at the end i won't spoil it if you haven't read it yeah, but i was don't. very happy with the payoff of who it was and uh and then actually, because of that, I started reading uh, Old Man Logan again. I read through that again, which was it's similar. It's the same kind of story. It's Wolverine in the future. Everything's fucked, and he's basically uh, on a mission. And it's it's like a road trip comic almost. It's him and Hawkeye. It's is, is really it, good. Like how much of the movie Logan is in Old Man Not Logan? Not a whole lot. Um, Old Man Logan is definitely its own thing, and uh, Logan is more of like if they took old man logan and just the movie universe of x-men um it's that kind of road trippy type movie but it's nowhere near the same thing as uh, old man logan they're both excellent i love the movie logan mm. it was such a great movie i definitely want to start talking about comics on here sometimes like there's a whole rack oh, yeah. of them on the other side of this yeah. room um i want yeah, to talk yeah. about like weird comic crossovers and like that could be like a topic later but i was actually uh, suggesting sometime we just talk about batman comics yeah, just I, anything I, batman i was but reading I, yeah. actually i read yeah. the long halloween again i, I I, I want to read that again. Oh, I, I, I have see the there. full. Uh, I have mm. the original comics, uh, yeah. like the original printing of the whole series. It's one of my favorite yeah, read, Batman stories. It's really good. Yeah, I read that one too. Uh, I, I saw that they're coming out with an animated movie. Of I'm it. excited. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I saw. I finally saw those animated um, '60s Batman movies they did before Adam West died. And I they, still got to watch those. Yeah. So Adam West does the voice. Burt Ward. You know, they they got uh, Julie Newmar's Catwoman. Cool. Um, and then um, they got William Shatner as Two Face. So they finally got uh, Adam West and William Shatner to fight each yeah. other. Animated and voices, of course. But you know, it's cool that they finally did that. Yeah, I mean, it's really good because um, cause there's, there's two of them. And I remember, I think I liked the first one actually a little better. Um, Batman turns evil in it for a little while. Oh, yeah. But it feels like that it, it fits into the 60s show. Like, it it feels just like you're watching another episode, but as a movie, mm -hmm. uh, it's great. Mm. You been watching anything? Um, actually, I just watched uh, uh, Shazam. 
Oh, okay. The, uh, uh, I haven't the, seen that. Oh, it's really good. That takes place in Philly, right? Yeah, it's uh. um, it's it's in the DC mm. universe. It's Captain Marvel, the DC Captain Marvel. Yeah. But uh, it's I was so surprised by how good it was, and also he's a he's in Philadelphia. Oh, so yeah. he's a Philadelphia based DC superhero. Uh, the story was great. The, the The characters were really fun to watch. I, I liked everything about it. It was just a really fun movie. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's yeah, oh, that's, cool. That's all. I, I, uh, I watch a lot of TV. That's about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I've been watching. Um, I watched through The Sopranos. I watch like um, all my YouTube recommendations are clips from The Sopranos. The Sopranos that's and all I The watched. Wire for me. Yeah, and, and because I watched The Wire, I watched the I watched Sopranos, and uh, I started Boardwalk Empire, and it, like all because I got HBO Max and. and <laughs> um. But yeah, so you guys been playing any games or anything? Uh, I play games with my kids uh, sometimes. Um, I mean, one of them is eight. The other one is three going on four. Um, So the eight-year-old is much more advanced with them. And actually, she knows a lot more than I do about a lot of games. Like, she knows more about, like, like Animal Crossing. And uh, um, But we play Zelda Breath of the Wild sometimes still because that game is just endless. You just go through and there's, like, so many different quests you could be doing. So I, I feel like... Whenever we play together, that one is kind of the best. Where we're, we're both like discussing, like we're both into it. Like, oh, let's go that way. No, 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 we should go that way. Let's do this first. Like, you know, like we get really into it. A Super Mario 3D World, you know, especially when they put it on the Switch with like the four players at once and everything. You know, we've been doing that sometimes, like three players. There's nothing really else that I've. Um, yeah, because I don't consider like doing ABGN episodes or recording stuff for that. Like that, that's like oh, work, you, not for go. fun. Yeah, you that's know? Like, count what, that. Then what I what what you see in the nerd. There yeah, you go. A bunch but, of crap. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been playing? Oh, Karen? you know what I play? I play oh. shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play good games. <laughs> um, I I was playing. Uh, I I the new Resident Evil Resident Evil Village uh, was awesome I loved oh, it I, yeah, I had that, such a yeah. fun time with that I fun. played through after I beat that I beat Resident Evil 7 again which was excellent I, I love playing that I, I've i been playing a lot of the remakes of Resident Evil and um, yeah cause you stream them all the time or yeah whatever. I've been streaming those every once in a while and then uh, I I Metal Gear I was playing through Metal Gear Solid again and I played through. I've been, and then on my personal time too, I've been playing Fallout Three again, which I I, I love the Fallout series. Uh, three in New Vegas. Uh, my one friend's playing New Vegas, and I was watching her play, and then I was like, oh man, I want to play, but I don't want to play New Vegas because. So I started playing three again, mm-hmm. and uh, I forgot how much I loved that game. And just it's so open of what you can do and where you can go. You could just yeah, go I anywhere always, you feel like. I and always do played those want. games like an asshole. Where at the end of the game, I've killed every NPC. Yeah, and I'm a cannibal. But the karma system's rigged in a way that you know there's more bad guys and good guys. Yeah. So, so you, if you kill every <laughs> bad guy and every good guy, you end up being. I high karma. I I always try to be like the like I am the savior of this wasteland and I want everybody to like me and I want to help out all the people that are good and I save Megaton and and I don't blow it up. I never blow up Megaton. I, I don't know how you could ever do that. It's got to go. But I do unleash the ghouls into Ten Penny Tower or whatever. Like I I put all the ghouls in there and have them murder all the <laughs> the rich people who live nah. there and take over. So I do that. But yeah, yeah I like the um, RPG stuff. Like um, late, like I just um, I should be on game three of Mass Effect: The Legendary Edition because they put all three games into one pack. Mm-hmm. And uh, after Andromeda, I'm just glad to go back to you know because like the Mass Effect series might be one of my favorite game series. That in Metal Gear, yeah. Um, and two might be one of my, and definitely in my top ten games. So uh, it was definitely fun going back there and being a dick bag renegade. And you know those yeah. games are a lot of fun because you know it's kind of like you get little Star Wars like Knights of the Old Republic because it's the same company yeah, Bi- Bioware. Uh, Bioware, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get um, you know a lot of it's you know very Star Trekky at the same time because I love Star Trek. So it kind of mixes all my things together with action yeah. games. So big on that. So I've been playing that. I'm probably still playing it right now, <laughs> depending on when this episode comes out. So yeah. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, you know the the song of the past year. You know that George Thorogood song. I think it's George Thorogood or Bob Seger. Is but it the one, one bourbon? One bourbon. One no, scotch, hey, close, one close. Scotch, oh, no, I drink alone. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, I drink alone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that is a George else. Thorogood. I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So on that note, so um, you know, because before uh, the pandemic, you know, sometimes we would go out to some bars sometimes, but 
uh, you know, because it was so long, I started making old fashions. Um, because and, and that's become just, like my favorite drink. Yeah, like in the last yeah. two years, I've become an old man. I drink old fashions. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like I went from Jack and Cokes to old fashions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, okay, I can't order this at a bar. So let me try to figure out how to make it at least. And, you know, I mean, it's a pretty simple as far as ingredients go, but it's all about just like, you know, getting it to your tastes and like... Do you do like um, the orange peel and the whole thing? Yeah, I, I put an orange peel in there. Some people say lemon, you know, but I, I do an orange peel usually. I've tried it all different ways just to see what I like. Um, that You know, it depends on, you know, the bourbon. I mean, it's supposed to be bourbon traditionally. Um, I've tried some different brands. You know, then it's the, what kind of sweetener you want to put in it. So it's, it's I, I've even tried it with honey. Sometimes, you know, make simple syrup um, with like boiling, you know, sugar and water stuff. But uh, that's the part I find the trick is the right sweetener. Because I don't really like it sweet at all. I just, just a tiny, you know, just a touch. Yeah. And then there's the bitters, you know, there's that part. And then if you get a good cherry to put in there, it's, you know... There's so much you could do. It's kind of like it's the act of making it that makes it so much fun. Yeah, I like the act of drinking it. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I know, like you know, like a, a little while ago, we went out to a distillery. We had a bunch of old fashions mm -hmm. and stuff. That was a pretty good time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just you know just kind of sipping and hanging out and stuff. It's always yeah, good. yeah, yeah. The old fashioned. The first time I ever heard of it, it was in um, it was in the movie. It's a mad, 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 mad world. My, my number one favorite movie. And there's a scene where there's the drunken pilot played by Jim Baucus, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, um, from Gilligan's Island. He, it's it's a funny scene. I mean, it's it's sort of like a, a in any other context, this would be a really scary, tense scene where the pilot is like drunk and knocks himself out and everything, and then then these two guys have to land the plane. Like it's really like it, it's a scary scene, but it's done in this slapstick comedy kind mm -hmm. of way. And uh, I mean, the, um, you know, the pilot, you know, has a bar in his like, in his like plane. And he's like, just push the button mark booze. And then they push it and this like bar just like appears. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, shit. Like, what are we getting into here? And it's it's an old fashioned. And he's like, you know, they're like, well, don't you think, you know, what, what if something goes wrong? And he's like. Or no, they they say what? What if something could happen? And he goes, "What could happen to an old fashioned?" <laughs> what? What if something happens? What can happen to an old fashioned? All right. And I always remember <laughs> all those lines from that. And I never thought, you know, to to try an old fashioned. I, um, but it was probably in the last few years or so. I'd you know I'd order at a bar sometimes just to see what it is. And uh, you know sometimes you get it made and you're like, oh, I don't know, this one's a little too sweet. This one's a little too bitter. But once you get it just right, then it's like there, there's nothing like it. It's yeah. called an old fashioned for a reason because yeah. it's it wasn't an old fashioned originally. It was just the whiskey cocktail. It's like that's the drink, right? And then it became the old fashioned because it's this tradition, you know. So yeah, that's become like my favorite drink because I, I was never really like a cocktail guy either. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually it's wine, a beer, maybe, but. You know, cocktails are kind of more. Well, see, there's a difference too between a cocktail and a mixed drink. And I think I would usually get a mixed drink, like a. I would think a Jack and Coke would be more like a mixed That's drink. That's a mixed drink, yeah, yeah. Because a cocktail is more like you're just dressing the alcohol a little more to make it like a, a yeah. like a martini. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's mostly booze, you know what I mean? But it 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 it's sort of masking some of the the bite <laughs> of it, you know. <laughs> press um, the booze button. You press the button, mark yeah. booze. I've been back to uh, just kind of uh, like, so I I I what I I was doing DDP yoga. Oh yeah, I didn't mention you lost like eighty pounds. I lost last seventy year. pounds mm -hmm. since 70 last year. Yeah, uh, I started doing DDP yoga in June, uh, and I wasn't drinking for like a few months. I I was like I got to cut it out because I got, yeah. I got really focused on it, and then uh, I was like feeling my oats for a minute, and I thought I was all cool and stuff. So I started you know drinking again but then now i've kind of i you know for a while i was like plateauing so then i and i now i'm back on like what i was drinking which was like mostly white claws because they're only a hundred calories each oh, like and there's the, like no carbs and seltzer hard seltzer and then also jack and diet again but i'm actually gonna just not because the thing is like jack and diet is like i was actually i would go to justin's house with measuring like 
cups mm-hmm. and I would measure my alcohol. So I knew exactly how, mm-hmm. like I count calories and all that stuff. And yeah. Yeah. I got like, uh, I got heavy into fitness, which was weird for me because <laughs> if you guys, you know, remember me from the last episode of rental reviews, I was, uh, yeah, I had this vest on and I couldn't close it. And now I can only not only close it, but I can like wrap it around myself like a robe. <laughs> and uh, I need to get a new vest because also this one's all messed up and okay. it's two sizes too big now. But um, I, yeah, so I, the thing is I have to cut the, because uh, also to DDP, he would, he, yeah, he yeah. always says like, you know, in the book it says, this you is know, this is Diamond Dallas like, page. Yeah, Diamond yeah. Dallas. It says like in the book, it's like uh, you know what things you can eat, what you can have, and everything. And alcohol, it just says don't. Yeah, and it's like, but if you must, like it tells you what. So Jack and Diet was really like the only <laughs> thing I get was a doing. Fucking diamond cutter. I am gonna. Yeah, yeah probably. He's gonna yeah, kick your ass. Because you all this old fashioned talk. It's like this is like one every like maybe like you know, week or two like yeah. apart because it's like yeah if you drink drink a bunch of them uh, in a row. I mean, you know, you regret it. You get some headaches and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I mean, when we went yeah. out to the distillery too, like, um, you know, it, we that was the first time I had been mm-hmm. to uh, like a bar. I think with everybody, I, while, we had yeah. been hanging out or whatever. Yeah, we had drinks like, like was, on the um, side, but that was the first time I was out at a bar you too? having okay. drinks yeah. with friends and stuff like that. And then, yeah. um, so I drank like, I drank like five or six old fashions, and each one of those is like what it's it's. It's syrup, it's mm-hmm. it's bourbon, it's all the stuff. Like each drink is probably like three hundred calories at least. And then mm-hmm. I drank like, you know, so that's like fifteen hundred yeah. and that's like that's like almost what I was limiting to my myself to a day mm-hmm. when right. I was when I was working out. You're like on a crazy. liquid diet. So in this past year and a half, we created a band. So we got Rex Viper now. Yeah. Um this was like just the most fun side project ever. I mean just you know uh, doing nerd for so long and everything i just want to do something else and it's not a new thing either it feels like i've been wanting to do some kind of band for the past 20 years mm-hmm. really i've been sort of just a you know private guitar player because pri- i because you know i'm so uh just obsessive over the world of music i listen to so much mm-hmm. it's just like i know when when what i do is shit you know what i mean like how you, you always have to you just put yourself to some kind of high standard because you've seen and heard so much that, um, you know, I just do music on my own, uh, privately. Just, I think this thing kind of started where I would be at a concert and it's always about getting as close to the band as possible. The best seat in the house, right? And what's the best seat in the house? Well, on the stage. So I thought about it. Wouldn't it be cool if I was on the stage there um, to really be part of the music in some way? I'll play cowbell. Who cares? You know, yeah. um, 20 years ago or so, I've practiced drums and all kinds of instruments. Uh, drums I picked up first because I kind of thought that would be the easiest. I was wrong. That's kind of what I yeah. did. I went into, like, you know, like in elementary school, they force you into band or chorus or orchestra. And I took band and did percussion because it was just the easiest. That's what I thought because I was like, well, it's a percussion instrument. You're not really, uh, there's no notes per se. Mm-hmm. But uh, drums, it's like you're the, the you're the backbone of the whole thing. It's like if you uh, you know go off time at all, you screw everybody up. Yeah. So drums is actually kind of the biggest oh. responsibility in a way. Well, I mean, going um, from playing a bass drum in a marching band or whatever to playing a full kit is like completely different. Well, you drums, know? You, drums used to signal soldiers when to fight each other too. Mm. That's what they used them for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like know? a civil war. Yeah, the guys like, are like, yeah. and they yeah. would be like, shoot your muskets. Right now. <laughs> then oh, I God. tried bass after that. And uh, bass I found really hard. Because, you know, everybody usually says, well, if you, you know, if like if you know guitar, you can play bass. Bass is easier, right? I'm like, okay, well, four strings. All right. Um, bass is pretty damn hard, I think, yeah. because the strings are so thick and it puts so much pressure on your fingers. Like I, I play bass and like my fingers hurt so bad from just trying to... Um, press it down to get to hit the note right you know mm-hmm. what i mean so i i either uh you know am not pressing it down and i'm hitting like dead notes or i'm like just tearing apart my fingers so then i moved on to guitar after that and once i did that i was like oh yeah this is where it's at because um rhythm guitar i don't yeah. do a uh, lead yeah so i think everything i do is uh, uh based in rhythm in some way or another um but once i did that i just felt like you know this is so much fun man uh, and then it was just a matter of what do you want to play? Because then it's just like, 
it, it's unlimited. Like I've been playing a lot of Black Sabbath. Um, I got a, a Gibson SG and tuned it to Tony Iommi's style. I'm wearing a shirt right now. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got this from uh, rockinpin.com. Uh, I believe the, the guy who sent it to me was uh, named Mauricio. And uh, they do all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, shirts and, like rock and stickers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, just check out Rock in Pin. That's with an I. R O C K I N P I N dot com, I believe. Hmm. Anyway, um, that was that was random, but but uh, yeah, Iomi. He's my favorite guitar player. But then um, I started getting into more uh, uh, feel good music, more happier. Uh, Oh, I was on a tangent there. I basically said I, I tuned my guitar in the style of uh, the Master Reality, Volume 4, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Sabotage albums. But anyway, um, we had to kind of choose what we were going to do because, Justin, you brought up to me this idea of doing this band, Power Extreme. Yeah, for the longest time. Uh, like, years like, ago. For a while. Ago. Like, you know, like, like back when we were doing stuff at like uh, Too Many Games or the after parties and stuff, Kieran uh, had a band with a bunch of guys. Yeah. A, cu a couple bands. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you were always lead singer. I I was in a band where we played like uh, what's it called? We played like a lot of like weird um, uh, like Nick tunes, like a lot of stuff from Doug and um, <laughs> wrestling themes. And I sang a bunch of Japanese like anime intros and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I I I only did like three or four shows like live with them, and then I I stopped doing, it. and then I started just kind of messing around with my own i have a few like music videos that i've done uh one the only one is a fast car is is uh my main one but i i, I, I like, don't I like um, fast car i play keyboard but i don't really play keyboard i kind of just uh i fiddle around with garage band until i make something that sounds somewhat okay and then i go okay th th i can make words to that and then i write lyrics and that's about it yeah but we were having we had this idea of a band called power extreme and it was supposed to be merging two different songs together, like Mighty Wings and Hadoukens, which later became a Rex Viper track. Yeah, and Power Extreme, of course, is from the Centurions cartoon. Yeah, the, the Power, the, uh, Power Extreme. Power Extreme, which yeah. is... And uh, uh, Dragon Force has a new album called Extreme Power Metal. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a few years old now, I think, but I, I, I love, love that album. I love Power Metal. It's probably my favorite genre yeah, of music. Yeah, th that was my only um, reservation about the, t the name, because we're not doing Power Metal. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, and we also talk about doing more original stuff, just because, you know, the hell that is like the copyright and getting the rights yeah. to things especially for two different songs at once which we've had to navigate yeah, for rex yeah. viper um what's well, the thing like i even on twitch like it's such a nightmare with music and everything like you're not even allowed to play things like the first guitar hero game because it has covers of songs that you might not own and that's why like bands like uh, like psycho stick i watch them on twitch all the time yeah, great. but they play all you know original stuff and their twitch shows are awesome well, what do you, we go rex viper is opening for yeah. psycho stick at too many games <laughs> yeah so we'll go. talk about Pull that together soon. Yeah, yes. but we had the idea for this band, and I wanted to, like, I don't really play any instruments, and I do backing vocals on Rex Viper, and I should have took chorus in elementary instead of band. I took chorus all my life. Because your voice is the instrument you take everywhere, Yeah, right? So I should have done that, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I never got good at singing. Singing was always like, because when I sing, my throat tightens up. And uh, and my friend Kyle was teaching me like how to. He was trying to teach me how to sing, and he's like, "You got to sing from your diaphragm." Like, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, you know, practice for like like a week or something. I came back to him was like, you know what, man, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Honestly, this diaphragm <laughs> shit. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> I, my biggest influence with singing was always uh, 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 Trey Parker's band DVDA. The from uh, you ever see Orgasmo or, no. or any of those uh, oh, or like any of the so South good. Park music that they sing? That's always where I just like uh, you're like no, you're just the, man. Like, yeah, the very yeah. like meow, like uh, <laughs> just how he always uh, like over the top, yeah, metal. just just yeah. like uh, almost like James Hetfield, how he always just like oh, yeah. at the end of uh -huh. everything, but making fun of that in a way. I've never been like serious, serious about. I, I'm more into making joke uh, music that I think still sounds kind of good, but it's. I'm yeah. definitely not super serious. There's about, a level like, what of humor to some, yeah. something. I mean, you like don't, fast cars. Like I'm a yeah. German yeah. 70s oh, techno cool guy. Too. And then, I saw that because yeah. you had it on your Twitter, like on the top. Yeah, like, it, well, was, I saw it used that, to be yeah. my top thing because I. Uh, it, a lot of people were just always asking me about that. So I I just made it one day. I made it literally. I was making toast. I <laughs> the song popped into my head. I played a little quick keyboard riff. I recorded it, and then I recorded. I I wrote the lyrics. 
like literally taking a shit. I was on on my phone on Google Docs taking a shit, and I wrote the lyrics. <laughs> it makes sense. And that's like where it well, came here, from. Here, let's play some of the song. Oh, the buh. <laughs> fast car off and fast car on. Fast cars racing down the autobahn. Fast car bumps and fast car twice. Buy fast cars, it's twice as nice. Fast car near and fast car far. Then you have a fast car, you're on the bar. Fast car who and fast car there. Fast car getting on the bim and stairs. That was great. Wow, awesome. <laughs> uh, the magic. But the yeah. backup, um, yeah, so we had the idea of doing Power Extreme and making it like Nerdy Guar, where we have giant... Nerdy Guar. <laughs> Nerdy Guar, where we'd have giant suits, and we had this whole, like, thing, but, like, it was just so much to figure out while we're trying to do, like... And then the world well, shut down and then, completely. Yeah, 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 and all that stuff, so James like, well, let's take that idea and try to do more of, like a, like, a normal kind of cover band. I was like, okay, cool. So he started piecing it. Yeah. You know, piecing it together. Because um, the idea really started with live shows. The whole idea was like, we want to play a live show at Too Many Games, which it seems to be happening now, actually. But, yeah. but um, a few years ago, we talked about this, and I think we were just so busy with Nerd and everything else, we just never got to it. And um, then during the pandemic, uh, we created Power, not Power Stream, Rex Viper, and it was really <laughs> it took such forever a, to come up with the name, and then we just ended up with Rex Viper. Well, we came with the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We came with the most '80s sounding name because what Rex Viper is specifically is like '80s montage music. It's yeah. like it's montages from movies um, or video game tunes, and we kind of mash those all together because. Because here's the thing, there's so many types of music I'd be happy doing. I like uh, stoner rock, like Sabbath, and like classic metal, like Judas Priest. Um, but you kind of have to pick one kind of thing. And I thought, well, how about do something that um, my audience is most likely to enjoy um, because the channel is is a video game channel or it's a retro gaming channel and the angry nerd has its audience and everything. So I was like, let's do something that's in tune with that. So the music we're doing is celebrating a lot of these retro games, but also just everything from like the 80s and yeah, 90s. And whatever. a lot of movie stuff considering Cinemassacre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, I, I think of it like songs that make you feel good too. They have yeah. this uplifting quality because um, when you put these all together, um, it's meant to just make you feel invincible. Like it's the, it's basically like this weightlifting power rock, but from a nerdy perspective. Montage music, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you know? nerdy montage yeah. rock, uh, you know, training music. Which I think but, is, if you're at the gym, that's the best music to look. Like any Rocky song or Karate yeah. Kid or anything mm -hmm. like that, it all pumps you up, makes you want to yeah. do like more. Like Stan Bush, Transformer yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of these songs are uh, straight up covers, but other ones tend to do something else. Like Mighty Wings and Hadoukens basically started because um, the song Mighty Wings by Cheap Trick, which is in Top Gun, is basically the same riff as uh, the Ken theme in Street yeah. Fighter. Yeah. And it was my theory that it's possible they could have um, planned that song in uh, in Street Fighter to be the guile theme yeah because he's like you know the american like soldier and the planes and like, in the background the plane, and everything. yeah but then I, they changed it they might have changed it to ken just so it wasn't so obvious because it's the same riff it's dun, 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 yeah you know so we basically mashed those two into a sort of a medley song did some alternate lyrics and then the next one back to the future was was sort of a the Back to Future and uh, Power of Love song, but Power of Love is actually in the NES game. It turns out yeah, all these years, it's just sped up. It's yeah. sped up. Which when you when so, you did that, um, it was the Angry Nerd where you revisit Back to the Future and you actually yeah. played the whole game. And when you said like, why isn't there Power of Love? And it's like, oh wait, no, there is Power of Love. It's just super sped. That blew my yeah. mind like completely. Have like, you seen there's like YouTube videos where they'll slow it down and then match it yeah, to the song? Yeah, because it's dun 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 But it's yeah. in the game. It's dun 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 yeah, yeah. dun 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 And it's like awful. <laughs> yeah. and, <laughs> and then, and then. Because they did we, the same thing with the with uh, Johnny B. Good at the one part where Marty's playing the, the guitar in the NES game, but yeah. it's Johnny B. Good, but it's just super sped oh, up. Oh, so it is Johnny B. Good. Yeah, really? it's when he's like, like when he's like playing it, you got to catch the music notes or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. kids are gonna love it. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, and, and Bob Gale uh, uh, tweeted. No, he didn't tweet. He he mentioned it in an interview. Uh, 
that he saw the Rex Viper video. Oh, that's oh, that, which cool. is so cool. Yeah. Bob um, Gale, the uh, creator of Tattoo Assassins also. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so in Power of Love, we just, we started off playing like the, the main song and then we speed it up until it turns in the NES song. And I knew doing that is pretty hard to just like have a tempo change where it's like a gradual change. I was like, you know, this is going to be pr- pretty close to impossible to play live. Yeah. So um, the the mentality was at this time, we didn't know when the hell we're ever going to have a chance to play live. So we just figured, you know what? More people are going to see it on YouTube anyway. So just concentrate on the Music the video. recorded song, yeah. make it at, make that as good as possible. And then we'll figure out the live show later. And that's well, all pretty much thanks to James Ronald too. He yeah. Is yeah. Insane. Like his composing and everything. Yeah. 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 The members in this band, it, it kind of just, it just came together organically. Like we didn't really, we, there was no audition process or anything. It was just kind of like we, we, it came out of conversation. So what really sparked it after a while, like we had been talking about Power Extreme, but then at that convention in Portland, I was talking to Adam because we went out to some bars and I remember we were just sitting there and he's like, yeah, I play bass. And like, you know, you, you want to do this band? I mean, like, I'm like, fuck yes. Why are we not doing that? Like, let's do it. So and then we actually made it happen uh, the following year. And uh, James Ronald, does, who does epic game music, yeah. he was a... Uh, uh, he does like the uh, the arrangement and he, he starts it off with a MIDI. He'll do like a MIDI that we can all follow. And then after everybody records their parts, he, he also does the final stage where he mixes the song. So um, he does that. And then James Harding from Villainist, he does the, the vocals. And then we also got um, uh, Jeff Warden, who is an old friend of mine on drums. Uh, so it all kind of just came together from like just having conversations with people. It is confusing that there's three James yes, in the there, fucking band. There are three Jameses in this band. Actually, doesn't every single person that well, because now actually technically I am not uh, a part of the band at the moment. I had prior engagements I had to leave for, but mm-hmm. uh everybody's name in the band begins with J except for Adam and and me at the time. <laughs> It was A J J J J J the A the J like everybody oh. and then three of which are James <laughs> then there's, there's James yeah. James James Jeff Justin yeah. Adam Kieran and uh, the the five was like yeah, the five yeah. J and A's is, or whatever that's yeah right well Kieran I think of you as kind of like a fringe member right now yeah like, you're I'm still kind, kind of like of the, a floater at yeah. the moment yeah uh huh <laughs> it's a real session <laughs> musician yeah. um. Which, which really the real answer, you're, you're busy with your streaming no, yeah, and stuff. No, so, yeah, I've been, um, I started live streaming again this year. I used to do it just kind of as a, like a, more of just a side hobby, but this year it actually started kind of taking off. And if you, I, uh, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at, uh, twitch.tv slash Kieran with, <laughs> it's K-I-5-E's. RN. I didn't think <laughs> this wow. would. Five, yeah. five E's, five J's. What uh, the fuck? I didn't think about how it was going to be hard to for people to find my Twitch back in the day well, we'll when just I made put a it. Link in the description. Yeah, or whatever. it's it's. But I, it's it's a joke on how my family uh, in Ireland always says my name. They never say Kieran. They they're like, oh, Kieran. How are you, Kieran? <laughs> they say like so. It's like K I E E R N, but. That was already taken, so I so kept you got adding the five. E's. I added E's until it finally said this name wasn't taken, and five E's was where it went to. Yeah, so by the time you see this uh, or listen to this, uh, the Hearts on Fire video should be out. Uh, with that video, you, I'm not sure if you could tell or not. Um, I did the best I could um, to make it look like everybody's there in the room, but we are all green screened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Compared it, to the first two videos where it's just like panels of each person and mm-hmm. stuff. Now it's like, we're actually all in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Like I sunk, like must've been over a hundred hours into that one to just, cause I, I wanted to see how good I can get the green screen. Just, just using my own. Yeah. And you did knowledge. a lot of like, focus pulls and yeah. posts and stuff like that like i was like wait field, yeah yeah i was like wait why did whoa that was pretty good like i was like i wouldn't i wouldn't have done that i would have well, been <laughs> lazy as fuck on it but yeah because that's what i was thinking because because anytime you work on anything there's always a point where you just have to stop and let it be what it is because there's you know there's always something you can do that's better so you have to at a certain point stop yourself so i would work on a shot and be like okay let me like match, try to match the color on them. Like, okay, maybe now it just needs a little camera shake. Maybe now it just needs like, you know, this or that. Or I was like 
adding straw on the floor to make it cover up our feet a little <laughs> shadowing and, and then stuff, yeah yeah i was doing so many things that um you know i just wanted to go as far as i could to try and make it look um like we're all there um so that was really fun i mean it was a lot of work syncing up like eight different angles of each person like each person had all these angles to sync up and then you know layers and layers of videos and then there'd be like a shadow or something in the you know how sometimes when you're keying out a green screen and then there's like a little shadow on the wall or yeah. something but there's something that you can't get out unless you do a mat so a lot of times i was matting around uh james harding's legs to get out of shadow yeah or like something like that i'm so um, meticulous about like green screen too where it's like i use you know i use after effects and mm, and premiere usually yeah. but i make like so many different because i can't mm -hmm. if i see one little shadow i have to like i even there's been times where we've had uh reflections where it'll key out so, like um when we uh what's it called vegas stakes for instance when, when that episode happened the part where you're outside and you're holding the uh the frogger cabinet i think the mini cab that whole thing or no it was a pac-man cab or something it got keyed out so i actually drew a, like rotoscope to shape underneath just to make it so it looked like it was not keyed out and things like that like i will sit there and yeah uh, like oh there's a part remember where james ronald's guitar actually my guitar too had a had there was some green reflecting on the neck somewhere and when that keys out there's nothing you can really do so you make that mat on a bottom layer yeah. and then you have to follow the neck yeah and, and you like, have to like animate it moving around yeah like yeah, it's yeah such a pain so there's a lot of that this video i was so obsessive over it but now it's done it's out um it's more basic it's more of a straight up cover than most of our songs mm -hmm. the next one wait till you hear the next one it's probably the most creative yeah, yeah we, we were talking about the titles and and i don't want to give it away but i was like how about it's this and everyone's yeah. like it is well, perfect it also has one of the greatest mm. animated scenes I've ever seen when, when you guys showed it to me I was like oh my god really I'm awesome. so mad yeah. I'm not in that one part I was like I should have just waited like thematically <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know thematically it is like the most creative one James Ronald came up with how to mash these two songs and wait till you see the next one as, as excited I am about the one about Hearts on Fire that we just put out wait till you see the next one it is like yeah. cause I think by too many games will have six songs to go live with, right? I think that's what it is. Yeah, I probably probably like six. So we are going to play live and see what happens. And, and it's we'll going to be a four music videos out by yeah. then. Too many yeah. games still like three months off from now. October, is it? It's uh, a first weekend in October. Well, I, well, I don't think we're yeah. going to have time to put out any more music videos. So a lot of these songs will probably be their live debut. Yeah, but um, because the next video, the one the one that I'm excited about is coming after it. it it's my, I don't know if it's going to be the best video, but I'm pretty sure it's the best song. Yeah, I, I even brought out an eight-string guitar just for that one, oh, which was sent by uh, my friend Mark. Uh, Mark Miller teaches uh, sound theory. He t teaches uh, uh, guitar lessons. Mark teaches guitar lessons at soundtheorystudio.com. He is, is like um, sort of like helping me with the technical aspect and music theory. Like, so he's been teaching me a lot of stuff. Um, so... Uh, yeah, he gave me that guitar, which I, I've used in the next video. Um, he, he recorded an album with it, too. Uh, his project's called Corruptor, mm -hmm. uh, Corrupt R. Huh. It's basically kind of like, uh, it's instrumental. Um, it's just like real heavy, like, you know, down-tuned metal. Uh, it sounds metal. Like, like cyberpunk or something, like yeah. Corrupt R. Y yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It, it, to me, it sounds kind of like Fear Factory, a lot, okay. it, which oh, is okay. awesome. Yeah. I love Fear Factory. But it's it's instrumental, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you're not a fan of like, you know, really harsh vocals and stuff like this is just instrumental, so it's it's uh, easy did, to listen to. Did Fear to. Factory do Shock the Monkey with Ozzy, or was that Coal Chamber? Maybe Nine Inch Nails, maybe? I don't know. We, uh, all this shit merges together uh, in my brain. Yeah. Because I've been in the like hard rock and all that shit since like middle school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, high school was definitely weird. Like, we'll get into like Manson and yeah. Rob Zombie and shit. Yeah, but. yeah. I started getting into, uh, what's it called, Meshuggah. You I know, never I've really like want... listen to them, yeah. and and their that one song "Bleed," which is like that that's their most popular yeah. song. It's oh my god, the drums in that song, and just the just that like neutral like mm -hmm. guitar riff, the entire yeah. song, it, and mm -hmm. the vocals. They are 
they're straight up like some of the best musicians there are in metal mm. i think like yeah like those really complicated drum beats yeah and stuff the, like, the yeah. feet are doing he's doing he's doing mm. just a ch -ch 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 up here but the feet are just doing insane work i i don't know like uh i i'm not I yeah. don't know music at all. I I know what I like. <laughs> you know what I like. Yeah. yeah, I may not know art, but I know what I like or whatever. <laughs> well, but uh, that's sometimes shit, what I watch. That. Like, yeah, like sometimes like before I go to bed, like if if I have like a little bit of time to watch something, but it's like not enough time to watch a movie, or if I'm about to fall asleep soon, I'll just I'll go on YouTube and just look at like you know stuff like that, like live mm -hmm. performances, and I'm all, I'm all over the place. Like yeah. sometimes like. Uh, like I was just getting into this '60s band, Vanilla Fudge. Oh yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then I was all, at that same t same breath, I'd switch over and I'm listening to this band. Uh, this band, I'm not sure how to pronounce. It's called Amaranthe. Amaranthe. Um, oh. And uh, they're really good. I mean, it's really heavy, but really melodic. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually recently I listened to the entire discography of um, Dragon Force and uh, yeah. Unleash the Archers. Okay, Unleash the Archers. They they kind of start off a little more death metal and then they turn into like more like power. Yeah, rock. yeah. I've always liked like Blind Guardian or a Rhapsody mm. or like the German power metal band or Scandinavian ones mm. have been pretty good because for a while that was really into. I went from like like you know like dad rock and stuff and like you know metallica yacht and stuff rock. like that and well i do like yacht rock i mean i like every genre too, yeah. dance music and all sorts of shit but well i think we're rex viper's dad rock because we're dad we're we're dads like well, some I, of us are, um, uh, well that's why i like my, my original band name idea the only one that i submitted was the sonic boomers because i know <laughs> oh, we're not boomers yeah. like we're all either gen x or millennials yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah but you know I, my idea was a it works because gen we're x, all older dudes on the internet kind of yeah. yeah like yeah, 30s yeah. 40s or whatever and then we're playing music from the 80s most yeah, of the time yeah, yeah. but also you know guile yeah. and street fighter and everything yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that was <laughs> my I, that was well, the I was only your album could be called the sonic <laughs> yeah, boomers yeah or... that's true too yeah it oh, could be used God. at some point that's, that's what but i love I, about i think there this was a band uh, called that too though oh okay yeah, or yeah. something i thought it was too specific to street fighter yeah but that's funny because adam said that the other day because me and adam got together recently to practice some of these and we we, we were able to get through most of them with you know minor mm -hmm. fuck-ups here and there but like the power of love part that where it speeds up boy we got to work on that yeah. but, it's, it's <laughs> tough not having but, the drummer with you yeah so I, adam said oh we're kind of like dad rock and uh i, th I think we <laughs> meant like like the of us literally are dads but that were like you know older too it's cool because what i really like about this is that um like if i did this band in my 20s it would have been a lot uh more uh like more was uh how do i say like more was dependent on it, or i'd feel like it was more urgent it was it was it might have been too important to me if i did it back then but now it's kind of like this <laughs> thing the fact that i can just have fun with we'll it just shit mm -hmm. them out it'll be, yeah. it'll be yeah but i think having fun like like when you have fun on screen it, it comes across yeah even subconsciously there's no, there's no like motive because like if i started a band in my 20s like early it would have been about like trying to get chicks with it or something you know mm -hmm. it's like now it's not about any of that oh, it's just definitely about not getting yeah. chicks of any of this <laughs> no 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 yeah, now, it's <laughs> just about having uh, fun just playing and yeah. like you know just being as nerdy and like you know uh, as possible and it's just it's fun like I, this made me feel so good when we were in the middle of the pandemic like when i got that mix sent back from james ronald and i heard it for the first time like mighty wings and hadoukens mm -hmm. i was like wow this this is just getting me so pumped up like it's giving me like um you know just positive vibes you know yeah. and that's what this it, it, is supposed to do it's exciting and then and it came out we put the video out like just a couple of days before my birthday before i turned 40 and i was like this is this is an awesome way to you know yeah. celebrate 40 <laughs> yeah well you just turned 41 right yeah like, like yeah. a few weeks ago well, it was the 20th anniversary of my 21st yeah, birthday I, I like that that <laughs> yeah. was a really good way to look at it yeah yeah my 21st birthday um shortly after it wasn't the exact day it was i went to ozfest 2001 nice my first yeah my first um uh legal purchase of alcohol we got a <laughs> what was it a woodchuck ciders you know oh, and, uh, you know drank way too many of them uh I mean, all that sugar now i think about it, like geez no wonder i had a headache i like first but, uh, legal purchase because it, oh it, who's yeah. ever 
first beer yeah. was when they were 21. Well, they, they also mm. moved the dates in America from 18 to 21, and depending on the state and stuff. Well, so. I mean, I was drinking. Yeah. Uh, I was not <laughs> drinking before. I, was, I wasn't drinking before 21. I never, why would I ever do that? <laughs> what, 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 narcs are watching? No, like, I don't know. Do? Like, it doesn't matter, but I mean, no, I mean, yeah. like, you know, I was probably, like, I think I was 19, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I just remember we, we drank them in the parking lot. We went in and uh, Slipknot was playing that night uh, mm. right before Black Sabbath, the original Black Sabbath. Uh, it was my second time seeing both of them, actually, I think. Because S- Slipknot was on OzFest 99. I saw Sabbath then. Uh, yeah. 2001, I remember, because I remember that was the first time, really, just standing there the whole time and watching Slipknot, not just going back and forth between like the two stages. Because they were, they were on the main stage that year, right before... They were either right before Sabbath or right before Manson, because Manson played too. I forget the order, but I remember me and my friends just watching Slipknot, and we're just like, holy shit, like, what the fuck is going on yeah. here? I saw them on Conan the first time I, yeah. I ever saw them in my life, and they freaked me out as a kid. I was like, like, on, 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 like you went to the Conan show? No, or? no, no. I watched them on TV oh, yeah, on yeah. Conan. And that was the mm-hmm. first time I'd ever seen them in my life. Oh, yeah. And I remember, you know, back then, everybody's like, they're Satan, oh, Satan yeah. band, oh, every and band all this stuff. And now band, it's yeah. like, I mean, now you know <laughs> Corey Taylor, and he's, he's yeah, a yeah. dad, and he's, he's just yeah. this nice guy and everything oh, but yeah, yeah back then they were like the most evil dudes ever i, I <laughs> you know the only people that liked them were like the messed up kids or whatever yeah. like you were you know well i mean first it was you know alice cooper was like mm-hmm. the evil you know crazy dude then it was ozzy and then it was manson you yeah. know it's always you know every decade has their like shock rocker i remember you know? like when manson came out and and i was i was mm-hmm. young when manson came out and he actually scared me and like mm-hmm. my mom was like she would not let me like oh yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. My, me and my sister were super into it and you know my dad didn't care or whatever yeah. but yeah yeah oh, remember we all we all saw ghost yeah and like you know like chanting satan and stuff yeah, like it's yeah. like because it's done in jest you could tell it's not yeah. like this isn't serious they wear makeup and everything but well he was a joking a, around the whole time and just yeah. saying whatever you yeah know? uh that was a great show too that yeah. that was one of the last ones we yeah got, I, got, I, think, I got pictures of that too i think we went yeah. to after that we did the 311 and was it oh, 311 and, yeah and that was great. show yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, but two, ghost um like we we get the most fans at ghost shows like every time i go to see ghost like there's always people coming people up were, like yeah, yeah i was in the bathroom line and people were like <laughs> well, walking yeah, up to me yeah, yeah. spooky scooby-doo music yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah, ghost is great but ghost it really there it, there is moments where it kind of freaks me out and it and because they do it so well because yeah. there's a a lyric in the song uh square hammer it's like in the hook it's like in the chorus where he says something like uh, are you ready to swear right here right now before mm-hmm. the devil and you're listening to it and it's so catchy and it gets into your head and then you hear that line like are you ready to swear before the devil i'm getting yeah. goosebumps thinking about it <laughs> and i'm like holy shit no and I'm, I'm just trying to listen to some music here yeah i, I just like that i don't know what, what i fucking I, signed up for yeah, <laughs> what am i getting into here um yeah it, it's it's um it's crazy uh but they they just do such a good job at it and it's and the vocals are clean and they're really like you know easy to listen to um very melodic uh like a lot of people look at them and they think oh this is just going to be this really harsh death yeah. metal but um I remember the not, first time i heard them was when we went to we were all going to Buffalo. Oh yeah. I yeah, went yeah. to Nickel City and you had the, the that C D was like brand new at the time. Mm-hmm. It had just come out and we were listening to it like almost the whole way there. And then we were yeah, just yeah. putting on whatever the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah. So it was like six hours. Yeah. <sighs> Remember we got stuck behind that giant machine thing? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, Whatever yeah. the hell that farm equipment <laughs> thing was. I think I picture that thing, too. It yeah. was weird. Because yeah. you were like, can we drive under it? Like, it was so big <laughs> that we didn't know if we should just go underneath yeah, it or that's something. Like, that's like farm country. I, I literally saw a video where someone tried to drive underneath and they got their car destroyed oh. and stuck. <laughs> I guess we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, oh, jeez. Right. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that thing was a monster. It was kind of like a... Like a like a Star Wars like one of those like mech yeah. things like a it, like a the yeah walker like a, a, the walker or, yeah. AT&T, yeah it was so weird because we were able to see it from like we were like a thousand feet behind it too and we, and we were just like what is that what is that thing and it took up like the whole road yeah I don't even know what the hell it was still yeah did we tweet it I think we I think we took I think pictures of it I'll, I'll try to find it okay <laughs> I bet we got an answer then somebody yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. there's got to be someone who knows. they're like you <laughs> idiots <laughs> yeah. <laughs> common equipment yeah um, that was a, that was a monster 
And I also remember the last concert I went to was Kiss, and I've never seen Kiss cool. before. I'm not like a huge Kiss fan, like of their music, but man, they put on a really good show. And the fact they've been doing it for like 50 years is, is insane. They have the most pyro of any band I've ever seen. Yeah. There's so much shit blowing up, and like they're always like going into the crowd. I mean, Gene Simmons is like in the ceiling, and then Paul Stanley is like out in the crowd, like like on like a you know, a zip line. Yeah, yeah. And the other two guys are like on these cranes on the sides. Like half the concert doesn't even happen on the stage. There at the end there was so much confetti. Like you you couldn't even see much. It was like a dense fog of confetti. Wow. Uh and the pyro it wasn't just like, okay, pyro that comes down from the ceiling, pyro that comes up out of the floor. And then these like twirly pyro things that would just spin. And um you know, a lot of bands now uh, like do most of their stuff on a video screen. Like even Rob Zombie, like he used to have like the the best show. He have all this stuff happening, and he still does. But most of his theatrics are like on a video screen now. Uh, Kiss, it was all like practical stuff. Um, so I'm glad I got to see them right before um, everything shut down. And David Lee Roth opened. And like Whoa. that guy, like in his old age, like he is still just on fire. Do he you still so do much... the, the thing with the bow staff and everything? No, he doesn't go as cr as crazy as okay. he used to. But you could tell the whole time he just has this big smile on his face. And he's like, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time? Do you still you know? drink a handle of Jack Daniels? Before? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I don't know. <laughs> it's just important to just live in the moment. Just like you see guys like that do that. And it's like, you know. That's why Rex Viper, we're going to go up and just have a good time. Yeah. All right, so we're doing like a fan Q&A, as I said, because, you know, panels don't really happen the last year, and mm -hmm. I thought it'd be good. So, you know, I'm pulling questions from YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, wherever. So uh, Dylan J. Cullen on Twitter asked, um, uh, yeah, where you come up with the logo for Cinemassacre, it's so cool. There is There has to be a story behind it. There's a chainsaw oh, sure. with a logo on it. The logo I designed in Mario Paint back in like 2000. At first, it wasn't a chainsaw camera. It was like a just a, a camera with like a light beam coming out because it was Cinematica. That was the first name for it. When it was Cinematica, it was more like um, it came. See, I don't know how deep you want me to go on this or how interesting it is, but like my friend Kevin Finn, uh, I met him in high school, and he was like the first guy I met who also made movies. And it was, we were, you know, trading VHS tapes. But I remember when he, the first time I talked to him and he was like, yeah, I make movies too. Um, my company name, it's Waff Jock. I'm like, oh, he has a company name. I'm like, you know, <laughs> we, we would just make these things up. He's like, what's, what's your company name? And I, I didn't have one. I was just kind of thought about it. I was like, but I didn't want to say that, that I didn't have one. So I just said back to him, I was like, oh, it's uh, Cinematica. Like I just came up with it on the spot and I kept it. And then I found out there was a TV studio um called cinematica and i remember being mad too more mad than i <laughs> should have been bastards so i was like oh come on they came somebody else has the name it's like i i it didn't matter who cared i could have still just used it it wasn't like an official yeah thing. but i was like mm, i gotta come up with a new one let's see. i think because mm, i was mad right it's like cine massacre and that's how, how it started but uh, then eventually it started to take new meaning because then it was like the Cinemassacre style is like massacring the traditional way of cinema. It was just kind of like do it your own way. Uh, when the odds are stacked up against you, you just go on a Cinemassacre rampage to you know get it done. And uh, yeah, there we go. The logo is designed Mario Paint. There you and go. She just I decided like to make it a chainsaw camera? Yeah, I made a chainsaw camera. You know what's funny is like people still write me this all the time is that the 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 treads or whatever, the teeth on the chainsaw are backwards. Oh. However the logo is designed right now, I guess the current one or whatever. Huh. I don't know. They always say like, oh, you know, those 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 uh, teeth are backwards. Like that I chainsaw couldn't that, actually right? work. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's sorry. also a chainsaw <laughs> camera. So Yeah, I so know. I guess like you wouldn't be cutting trees with it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a lumberjack or anything, so I don't, I don't really know or care. But it, it, it's funny now. It's just kind of like a funny thing. Like, yeah, the teeth are backwards. So, yeah. 
All right, cool. So we got uh, another one here from, uh, this is from Health Hazard on YouTube. Uh, Do you ever plan on continuing board, James? Uh, what was the hardest episode to film, and which was the easiest for Board James? Oh, um, love your stuff. Oh, thank you. Uh, Board James was one of my favorite things I ever did, um, and it had that luxury where the nerd was still going on. So by discontinuing Board James, it wasn't like I had anything to, you know, risk. So Board James, I got to do it my own way, like every possible s- step of the way. I was just doing exactly what I wanted to do with it. Um, Dream Phone was originally going to be the last one because I killed off all the characters. Yeah. I just thought it'd be funny, like, just to end it. Like, this show that started with just, like, playing board games, you know, it's all fun and games, and then just killed off everybody. Like, yeah, it's it super dark. dark. Yeah. yeah. So that was going to be the last one. And then, then um, you know, a lot of people kept asking, are you going to make any more? And I thought, well, okay, if I am going to do any more, I'm going to do it as, like, a, a story arc. It's going to have a set ending like it's like you know like almost like a movie i came up with the whole thing where it just went to this deep mythology where he's every time he died he is reincarnated into another game and that's where everything is happening it's it's like inception with board games and that's all revealed in the last episode so that the last episode nightmare which was also the hardest one to make is the final episode and it was designed that way like this is the final chapter this so, uh, so no, I don't want to uh, do any more after that, unless I have thought of a way to do a prequel. And the prequel is like totally uncompromised. It's just dark as shit. You know, it's just like, it, it just starts right off the bat, like just gritty. Like this is his past life as a criminal before he died and, and was reincarnated into the board games. So this, the prequel I don't know if we're ever going to have time to do it because, to be honest, to do the, the prequel the way I want to do it, it would probably take like a whole year. Uh, and so that would mean having to put a stop to nerd. Like, I can't do it all at the same time anymore because uh, when we did the the last season of Board James, that was like, if you just counted the time it took to make those eight episodes there, that, that was like six months straight of like intense work. Um, it was actually more spread out, but it was like six months total probably because that same year I was like, I was still doing AVGN. I was like, I, I did that Jekyll and Hyde movie trailer. And oh, like, yeah, yeah. I was killing myself to get the, the, the board James saga finished, you know, the right way. So I don't see how I'd, I'd ever have time to do it. Um, that's, that's the short answer. Gotcha. But I guess what was the, uh, the hardest one to do and the easiest one to oh, do? Oh, Nightmare. Nightmare was the, the, the final episode. Nightmare was the hardest one. I guess the easiest was when it wasn't um, even called Board James. Yeah, the easiest was probably Mousetrap, probably, because it was like that was just a straight up. Oh, I found out the other day there was a Pokemon themed Mousetrap. I didn't oh, realize yeah. that. Like they themed the, but it's the same pieces and stuff. Oh, yeah. And there's the cheese is still there, but it's a, still a piece of cheese and it's called a trainer cake. Huh. huh. I thought that was pretty funny. Okay. Uh, I don't know a lot about Pokemon. So I don't know if is it is that a reference? Like the no, no? they just didn't want to change the cheese, so I'm they called it. Yeah, a I wonder why they didn't like, make cake. it like a puffin or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Also, I I just want to say the my favorite is the Mister Bucket one. Oh, I just think yeah. that one is so fucking funny. <laughs> He's like he wanted to. I think he wanted to eat my balls or <laughs> when you're yeah. on the phone with Mike and the other house and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so funny. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, so fi- to bring up Mike, final question here from mm-hmm. Reddit. Uh, I'd like to hear James talk about Bootsy, Kyle, even Mike. Mm-hmm. Well, um, even if they won't be featured new, ep- uh, even, oh, yeah, yeah. even if they won't be featured more episodes, it'd be great to hear something more than just like, oh yeah, they're still around, good memories and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know they have their own lives, and these guys are part of Cinema Massacre. Lots of fans want to know what happened to them. Nothing happened to them. They all have their own yeah. lives. He answered it right there. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, Kyle, like he was a. Um, like we, we used to spend so much time like before we had families or anything it made it a lot more difficult so because yeah, he's got seen, a bunch of kids and stuff I yeah think. yeah oh he's yeah yeah. He's, yeah i mean he he was like really really busy um like i've you know tried to reach out to him and stuff like, like i wanted him to do like that little spider-man part in vegas but mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even get in touch with him he's so busy um so like kyle like he helped me get like you know some of my first jobs he's helped me uh you know meet my wife um oh. kind of indirectly like kyle has done so much for me in the past um so he's just a great 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 friend and like bootsy i remember like we went to magfest uh 
like a few years back or something. And then, oh, uh, I was there. I filmed you guys. Oh, did we you? We were all at the bar together. Oh, Talk, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. Shooting yeah. The shit, I was shooting the shit with him about like baseball and stuff. Oh, yeah. Bootsy's a big baseball yeah. fan. And he, uh, we went to the last ACDC concert, uh, me and Bootsy. I mean, that, that was when Axl Rose was singing. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no way, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they might actually come back. I mean, ACDC might play again. But anyway, for the time being, like, yeah, last ACDC show. Um, and Mike, Mike is the most likely that you'll probably see around. Uh, see him every now and again. He's not really doing too much on YouTube because he streams all the time. He focuses yeah. Yeah. all the time on his on his Twitch, which oh, I totally yeah, yeah. get. I mean, he, he my, Mike raided me one time and it was like 700 people. And I'm used to like 70 people mm-hmm. in my stream. And then all of a sudden, like I couldn't even like do the chat anymore. But Mike's been doing, Mike's streams are pretty funny because it's just Mike raging yeah. out at old games pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because because Mike's streaming, Bootsy's doing his own music stuff, I think, and Kyle just has a family and like a business, I think. I think yeah. he does like construction stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, modeling. Yeah, Mike, we might do something uh, soon, um, but uh, yeah, I'd like to have him on as a guest here. Yeah, because you got me thinking. Like, there's so many people that I'd like to um, reach out to that I, that I haven't seen in a long time. It's funny because people ask me about them because they've seen them on camera, they've been yeah. on the shows with us, but there's so many people that I just haven't talked to in a yeah. long time. Uh, you know, I don't, like I never I, met any of them. Like not oh, even, well, I know you did really? the thing with Kevin Finn, uh, the, the, the head incident sequel. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And, I, I, yeah. Oh, and my, my friend, my, the other Kevin, who was actually the star of the original head incident. Oh yeah. I yeah. finally talked to him after all these years and it's so funny. He hasn't changed at all. But when we filmed that, um, cameo, okay. Cause so, so last year during the pandemic, I, I filmed a sequel to a horror film I made back in 99 called The Head Incident. It's about a murderous dummy head that goes around killing people. So we made a sequel 20 years later, well, 21, but it was meant to be kind of like H20, mm-hmm. you know, Head 20, you know, the, the yeah, 20 yeah. years later. And I tried to get the original actor back. Uh, he was too busy, but we at least got to like talk and stuff. And it was just like old times. Um, I got him to film a cameo and... Um, it was tough because he didn't really have any like camera equipment or anything. Like he's not mainly like a video production type of guy. So, mm-hmm. so I had to like give him the lines and have him uh, film it on his phone. So I couldn't even talk to him while he was filming it. He had to like um, video, like text me the shot. And then I'd call him back and be like, can you try it more like this <laughs> and everything? But we did it and, and uh, you know, he's really happy to be in it. Um, yeah, I didn't so, know what the head incident was until we did Monster Madness yeah, that yeah. one year. And then uh, when I when I saw it, and then when you were making the sequel, I was like down. Because I love the head. The head incident was like... Oh, yeah, just... thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so weird and creepy. Um, it's kind of funny, but it's also like, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. You know? But then um, another one really interesting. I want to post this soon, actually. Um, very recently, I met up with uh, one of my old neighbors. Um, you ever notice in the Angry Nerd episode, sometimes on the back of the, the Nintendo cartridge, there's like a, a sign name or something. Mm. No, you might honestly. notice it. Yeah. Every once in a while, you know, cause you know how back in the day you would write your yeah, name right, on the back yeah, of the yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, um, a lot of those games came from my neighbor and my old neighbor and he had a lot of his, um, uh, like, you know, his, his, his family would, you know, put their names on the back of him and his siblings. Um, and one time, I think they just got rid of all their Nintendo games. This was like late in the 90s, like way after like, you know, PlayStation was out and everything. So I inherited a lot of those games. And a lot of them are ones I reviewed on the nerd, like Karate Kid mm-hmm. and everything. Um, and I was like, well, how cool would it be to get him over and reunite him with his actual childhood games? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. So I, I, I got him over and we, uh, we filmed it, uh, you know, just like old times. Um, and we played a lot of those games that were, that used to be his. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. He was the, the, a lot of times like I'll tell stories in the episodes like, oh, uh, my neighbors had Sega Genesis and I had Super Nintendo. So we would go over each other's houses to play, to sample each. Uh, that was that same, uh, neighbor. Gotcha. So there's so many stories that were in episodes that, um, started with him, uh, my friend John, uh, and, uh, well, you know, I, I filmed a video with him of us playing the games. And so that's, that's cool. That's another one to check off the list of an old friend to like hang out with. Yeah. And he helped on the head returns though. Also. Okay. He, uh, he was a camera uh, operator on the part when, um, I'm being chased in the woods. He also played the guy in black in the, the, the trench coat. Okay. Um, for that scene. 
Hmm. So that's why he changes body type a lot. Like, gotcha. Oh, that's one thing I always forget about. Like, you could put a costume on anybody, but everybody has different body types. And yeah. like, you could, you know. No, that's the thing. I never met, I've only met you and Mike. That's, the, you're the only Cinemassacre guys. Because I, I, I kind of, I came in pretty late. I was like, uh, well, yeah, you started working on stuff. And I was like, like freelance, though. I wasn't working in the office or anything. I was kind of just, yeah, because I've been working on Cinemassacre for what? five years now like 2017 something like that wait like, i started like around 2017 i think too. no you've yeah. been doing it longer well i've been doing that. screen yeah. waves since 2015 but yeah i was doing like the first nerd episode i worked on was treasure master oh, I, my, and, and i was inside the polybius uh cabinet for a little bit there i did some of the fatalities for sub-zero mythology <laughs> oh yeah 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 so that, that was the first thing i ever like technically i guess like worked on yeah yeah we've been doing this for a while but uh and if anyone cares about Tony from Hack the Movies, uh, from <laughs> rental reviews, he's still doing Hack the Movies. In fact, yeah. that set is right behind these cameras. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. And Newt, who is on Hack the Movies, is watching us, uh, taking notes Kinda about the podcast. Kind of to bring up that thing we brought up in, uh, what was it, um, uh, rental reviews at one time, where I said that thing about how nothing behind you exists. <laughs> So if you turn or whatever, it's you all know, fake. all the people. Yeah, so it's like that's pretty much what. <laughs> was that from the Truman Show <laughs> I episode? think it was. Yeah, sure I think so. Yeah, because. Oh, yeah. you know what? Not to bring up another thing weird about the Truman Show. Uh, <laughs> so remember, I, I shared a fact with you guys about how the scene in the Truman Show where they're showing all the people crowded around watching a concert. And it's the Truman Show on giant screens. I now own the VHS of that concert. It's the Hall and Oates Liberty concert from 1985. You, I, you own, own the VHS I own tape. the VHS. It's the only one that was on eBay. And I was checking for years on eBay. I was typing that in. <laughs> and the only thing you could find was a Japanese laser disc. Mm. But I got, I have it on VHS now. Yeah. And then this <laughs> podcast set is where the uh, retail reviews store used to be, the, uh, the, the, the Fucko Land that, yeah. Mike, that Mike was running. So now it is. Where is that? N now it is a generic podcast set. But like, where is the fucko land stuff? Like, boxes. where's the set to that? Oh, it's just it's boxed up. Boxes. Yeah, and and all the cabinets and stuff went to like storage. Because yeah, I was gonna say, like, I don't remember where it all went. I just kind of we just kind of got here it out of here. Gone one day. Oh, it, it took. <laughs> we 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 had my birthday party in here, and then the next day it was all gone. That's right. Yeah, it took us a day to get everything out of here. Yeah. But yeah, that's the Cinemassacre podcast. I, I don't know how long it went. I think for a while, but mm -hmm. figured the first episode would be long. Get people reunited. Yeah, we're kind of getting. We're catching up with everybody, you know. Yeah. It's like, Any final thoughts, James? I gotta piss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. I do too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go pee. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Cinemassacre podcast. See you next Tuesday. Check out more episodes at cinemassacre.com or wherever you fill up your ear holes with podcasts. Remember to like this episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment below. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Drinks are on you. <laughs>